Looks can be deceiving. What started as a small alpine mountain quickly expanded into the largest theme park ever featured on this show over the last seven years and 600 episodes of Park Spotlight. This park changed my life. This is literally setting and breaking records across the board. This park has some of the best coasters I have ever seen. A winged launch canyon runner that spans miles across this park. A 10 mile long train ride and that's only one of two that I discovered later on in the video with the what I thought was a world record train ride at four kilometers was outdone by an even larger one the canyons the trains pass over the bridges the scale the coasters everything in this park is revolutionary breaking records down to even just the corkscrew coaster we have an RMC steel topped hybrid turned into a mine train and and that's where the whole park started for this creator. There's everything in this park has just blown me away to a point where I had to redo this intro because it did not do itself justice. If there is any theme park video that you should ever watch on YouTube or my channel, it's gonna be this one. So buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, and join me on the most epic park spotlight experience to date. Let's go. Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're gonna be looking at Alpine Mountain, created by Max Speed 3, an advanced builder in this community. You should be immediately a legend after showcasing what you have here today. Here they say, hey yo, Johnny! All capitals, please find the park description on my workshop page. There are also two traditional co additional comments on my post for additional quests. Cheers, max speed. <laughs> quests? You want me to do freaking quests? Uh, what's what's the whoa, 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 workshop says? Way too much. This will be an hour long episode if I just read the workshop. Let's read the first paragraph, the description. The building of Alpine Mountain started about three and a half years ago and around 450 in-game hours just before COVID, building off and on, mainly during long, cold, dark Minnesota winters. Yes, it is true that Minnesota can experience all weather types from snow to rain to thunderstorms and to tornadoes to hailing lightning and uh, back to snow to rain to more snow and finally back to sunshine from 18 degrees to 85 degrees as little as three days. Well, that is great to know, but tell us about your park, please. It's true. I'm not lying. <laughs> Now, now on to a brief backstory on building the park. The park started as just wanting to create a blueprint coaster, just one coaster to share with the wonderful community that which you will encounter during our visit called Mine Rush. It is the center of the park. It does look like where it started. I can definitely see that because as the, I opened up the park file myself, I was looking at Mine Rush and I thought, oh, this should be a nice little alpine mountain for us to explore, which will probably end up being one of the longest episodes of Park Spotlight in the history of this channel ever. <laughs> this park is insane. And then he goes on to say, and I started working and, and well, that happened a bit, a bit of a creative bug bit. So uh, he goes on and on and on and on and on and on for seven scrolling pages. Uh, let's see what the side quest is all about. Uh, P.S. A side quest. Also have hidden some things throughout the park as a bit of a scavenger hunt if you're up for it. These objectives are just fun to keep an eye out for and not any part of the mystery of the park. Don't forget bugs spray uh don't forget to bring a flashlight some areas are dark I, there's even underground portions to this park that you do not see in the b-roll oh my god there's more there's more <laughs> i hope your camera skills are good oh my god there's a firework display oh okay so my immediate feedback to you <laughs> It takes more effort to say a lot of things with fewer words than it does to just say a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, I think you could have somehow made a summary at the top, a TLDR, if you will, of the things that you really want us to know, rather than starting things off about the weather of your hometown, Minnesota. <laughs> uh, there's so much information here, I don't even know how to skim through it, and it doesn't help that it's all in caps, but we're going to treat this like a traditional park spotlight. We're going to explore the park and go on some freaking rides. So why don't we get right to it? Chief B. Oh yeah, welcome to the largest theme park 
in Planet Coaster history, which also includes 5,000 guests. It originally had a zero, and I said, I just cannot explore what appears to be the biggest park I have ever seen and not let guests in. I think uh, I've let them in and I've hit fast forward and I think the park has consumed them. Let's see how many guests we can actually see upon entering this park. It's quite a few. I don't know how long they've had to roam around, but normally 5,000 guests will be quite a crampy experience. Not today. Strap up, guys. Grab yourself some popcorn, some snacks, some drinks, you name it. We're going to be here for a minute, a hot minute. And I definitely do not want to rush this one here today. Funnily enough, I uh, I decided to record one more for this weekend. So we had like a triple park spotlight weekend sort of thing. I'm like, let me just grab another small one. Alpine Mountain looks like it's probably just going to be a small little mountain. Ends up being uh, the most epic park of the entire weekend. <laughs> And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm already here and I got some time and this looks so fun. I cannot just close it down and save it for another day. I'm too giddy. I'm too excited. Let's just go for it. So hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. And if you aren't, check out the other videos from this weekend because this is probably the most extravagant weekend of Park Spotlight history as I have three of the most incredible parks I have seen in a very, very long time. All Park of the Year contenders right here back to back to back to back three days in a row. I don't even know where to get started with this one. I know this is gonna be, uh, it's funny because last week we did a park, uh, let me see the channel here, Appalachian Adventures. I literally said it was the most mind-blowing Alpine experience I had ever witnessed in it. In terms of density and artistic polish and how well it, cons it was constructed, even though there were only two coasters in the entire park, I said that, that I was completely satisfied and it didn't need any more than two. It was, a, it was a complete package, a complete experience, and I didn't think it could get any better than that. And then we stumble across this. It looks like last week's experience stretched out across the entirety of the Planet Coaster Sandbox map. It's literally to the edge, to the edge, to the edge and elevation and detail from every square meter across the entire landscape. The scale of it is enormous, like nothing I've ever seen. I've seen large parks throughout the history of this channel, and so have you guys. You've been on me on these adventures with me. But the scale, the pure size, you will see when we ride some of these coasters and attractions, and as you would have saw from the B-roll, it's it's enormously vast, and I'm excited. I had to bring this guys to you guys, and I, I, I could not say no to this. Already, the first coaster of the day is two kilometers in length, probably the smallest coaster if I would make a guess. <laughs> And six inversions, six inversions, what are we going on? That's a hybrid steel top. Uh, four airtime counts on this, 70 miles per hour, 34 meters is the biggest. I thought we were lining up for a mine train coaster. Not the case at all. Looks like we're uh, going on a steel top. Let's make sure we're getting on the right coaster here. I'll probably want to check this out at night unless they used a sequencer to change the time of day on us, but we're going to go seat view. Hopefully they don't flail around too bad, but I want to, I want the authentic experience. Actually, they're flailing. Let's do this. This is a good experience. Ooh. <laughs> this looks wild already. Let's go.
is how you freaking do it. Wow, good googly, freaking mogly. The first half of that coaster, I thought, wow, this is impressive. It's spiraling through the mountains. And first of all, I, I was surprised to see an RMC because when I was getting the B-roll, I didn't even notice one on this mountain. And I was like, wait, what? I, that's why I thought we were going on a mine train coaster. Uh, we, we, we gotta do this in track view so we can actually like, experience the experience from the authentic smoothness of the track. But yeah, like I didn't even know what I was signing up for with this. And the spiralingness through these well-crafted mine train tunnels that are extremely extraordinarily detailed was just blowing my mind and then we get to the second lift and the coaster just kicks into high gear i was like wait it's not over the first half of the coaster was better than most rmc's yet alone mine train coasters rmc's they're they're doing inversions they're twisting and turning and spiraling and to do that all through the mountain was impressive enough to me and then we just go into action mode after that and i was like what am i witnessing here you guys this is the first coaster of the park and there is some crazier looking stuff than this i we might have a contender for coaster of the year on our hands here this is gonna be an experience let's go Talk about a freaking hybrid. That has to be one of the, the, the most impressive steel top I have ever witnessed on the thousand, two, three thousand plus videos I've done on this channel over the last seven years. I mean, the thing that impresses me the most is, yes, it's a steel top hybrid coaster, but it's actually a hybrid mine train. I've never seen anybody take an RMC and make it into a mine train coaster. Like... Uh, what? That, 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 it's, I never thought a mine rush experience could be that insane. And that's because most people use mine train coasters and there are, they are vastly limited in their potential in terms of speed, exhilaration, ferocity, et cetera, et cetera, compared to that of an RMC, right? This looks incredible, by the way. Look at this. I am just blown away. I literally got blown out of that tunnel too. <laughs> Literally blown away. Wow, I, uh, I'm on cloud nine here and we're just getting started. The innovation of that RMC was just incredible. And I'm just like, what other surprises do you have in store for us? This is so atmospherically impressive to me. This is kind of eerie. We're going into the mine now. I don't know how, I, there's there's a lot of coasters just on the center. So based off their the, what I read of their description, and I apologize for not going over the whole thing, I was reading that they said that they started with a coaster on this mountain. So uh, they said it was uh, bah, 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 something, it was one of the mine train coasters, right? Mine Rush. I don't know if this is Mine Rush or not, but whatever mine, was it the one we just went on possibly? This might be one of the quests. Dare? Enough? Um... They said there's like Easter eggs and quests. So that's also kind of like a fun extra. Triple dare. Once you open your mind, anything is possible. Yo, I gotta take a step back. This is creeping me out. This is like, uh, this is not a theme park anymore, you guys. Oh no. This is the, sh this is 
I must swore. This is the This is the shit from my nightmares! I have I literally have dreams that I have to crawl through spider infestations to get out of a place. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is going on? Our we're breaking down our reality. Subconscious. They said bring a flashlight. What is this? I um I'm extremely impressed. What is that? Which way do I go? What is going on down here? It's like parallaxing. How deep does this go? What in the world? Did we just step into the Twilight Zone? What started as a park spotlight of an alpine experience is now something else. I am terrified. What is down here? What? This could have been the episode alone. There's so much park above us that this is just unnecessary. I am so confused why you Earth. What is all of this? I am just so confused. This is a mad trip. What? This is like if Pixelated made a theme park. They usually spend three and a half years on a single ride. Speaking of which, I do have one from them that I'm supposed to edit. Oh my God. I came all the way down here for this. Worth it. Okay, I'm not mad at it. You had me, uh, slightly frightened. What? Wait a second. Is there supposed to be a coaster down here? I'm... Whoa. Yo. There's another cavern over there. What is this? Okay. When I said grab a snack, I meant grab lunch and dinner. Get the crock pot going on, because we're going to be here all day. Uh, she jumps and... <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. There's our, our swinging mine train coaster. Exit only. Wow. Mind swing. This is a lot for me to unpack. I tried to emphasize in my introduction that when I opened this park, I thought I was signing up for a small mountain park spotlight with a couple coasters and a few rides. And then I was like, wait, this is unpacking to be one of the biggest parks I've ever seen. And then I'm feeling like I didn't emphasize that enough because it's kind of getting crazier. I don't know which coaster I'm supposed to be on. Okay, this one's pulling in. Yeah, we're gonna sit seat view. Uh, yeah! This is happening. Right here, right now. This my train looked insane too. If it's anything like that RMC, we're in for a treat. Let's go. It's eerily quiet. I need a little bit of music. Little bit of ambience. I don't blame you for not having too much ambience in your park so far because it's so big, but definitely the one thing that's lacking so far. Wow, very atmospheric, very cool lighting and interesting cave networks there. Again, compared to the previous experience, I felt like maybe just a little bit of audio could go a long way. It's meant to be a little bit more chilling and atmospheric and spooky. I think just having a little bit of that uh, speaker work and uh, stuff like that or a, a, an eerie song choice on the coaster could have definitely gone a long way. I am hearing a lot of sounds in here, dripping water and cave echoes and, 
and that sort of thing. So that's pretty good, but uh, the, the actual ride itself was lacking in comparison. But I cannot deny how amazing this atmosphere is. Holy moly, it's actually so wonderful to be outside again. The the shift in mood coming out here. I expected everything to be all like, Alpine Adventure, we're going on a mine train today, and da da da, and, and wow, that was a, a brain twister. Holy moly, and then we get this cheery music now. Oh, this train ride, we're gonna have to go on at the end. It looks to be a record setting, actually I wanna find out, a record setting train. Yep, four miles, no big deal. <laughs> Four mile train ride. It goes up and over, under. You guys would have saw it in the B-roll that I captured. It's just enormous. That might take 15, 20 minutes to ride alone. Actually, uh, it does say the duration. 600 seconds. Isn't that 10 minutes? It's a 10 minute train ride. Jesus, that is wild. Pathwork's really cool too. I like all these uh, compass logos and stuff you got going around here. Holy crap. Hola. So we went on a mine train coaster in, uh, this is an exit, right? We went on a swinging mine train coaster, but we have an actual mine train, Alpine Adventure. So Mine Rush was in fact the RMC. That's what started this monstrosity of a park. They built that wild and crazy RMC, put a lot of work into it and said, hey, why not add a swinging mine train? Why not add a mine rush coaster and then some of everything. <laughs> Just make everything. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh my god. And Planet Bluegrass. Oh, what a guy. Max Speed. Uh, a name I am not familiar with, by the way. I gotta click on their profile real quick. Yeah, this is like literally the only thing they've ever made. And when did they publish it? At the end of 2023. Well, Max Speed, I have you on my radar. Don't stop here, man. Keep up the max speed and keep building. 1.3 kilometers in length, 51 miles per hour, 50 meters only is the largest drop. A little bit of air time, it's green across the board. Everything's looking good. It's supposed to be designed as a family friendly experience. We already had the RMC for those adrenaline seekers and the creepy mine train down below. So we got a little bit of everything when it comes to trains. Even a four kilometer, 10 minute train ride across the largest park ever recorded. Incredible. Let's go Planet Bluegrass. Let's enjoy the music. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Let's go! smiling ear to ear this is freaking amazing best train ride usage of planet bluegrass i i cannot we had all the flailers we had like people in front of us everyone had their arms up we had the music it was a good old time but for those uh coaster enthusiasts let's just do it one more time in the track view so we can just feel be the experience let's go we're going right to the top giving it one more go enjoy
Max Speed 3 spared no expense at making these coasters just over the top extreme. And I freaking love it. That is what Planet Coaster is made for. Just taking things to the next level. And <laughs> I gotta say, like you load it up, it looks kind of like a an ordinary, just it, it, it's just like a lot of vastness. It's like this little section here looks like an amazing little theme park, right? You got a corkscrew up there, a wooden coaster, beautiful little villa area, some bridges. It's like, that's a park spotlight right there, right? No, that's like one tenth of the park. <laughs> and it's like each area of this park has this like, oh, that looks like a good theme park over there. Oh, let's go over to that theme park over there. And, uh, and then you get there and you discover like the most over the top, impossible experiences when, you know, from a bird's eye view or just a first glance or or maybe just if you go to their workshop page, for example, which is what I did, I saw some rocks, some trees, a log flume, a couple coasters. And I thought, okay, this might be like a pretty good experience. Like I wasn't expecting a lot out of it. I definitely think you could have sold me on it a little bit better uh, with your screenshots and stuff because uh, this is far beyond what my expectation level was based off of your limited screenshots, right? So I'm kind of pleasantly surprised at the very least, but also kind of disappointed that, you know, I could have accidentally missed this because uh, if I wasn't just in the mood for, you know, a log flume and a couple Alpine coasters, I might not have selected this. In fact, it's been sitting in the bin for a little bit. So sell your screenshots, guys, but we're here now. That's all that matters. And now we're going to the Crystal Cave. Really good job with the fog. I gotta say, it's running beautifully too with all these gas and how vast it is. Like, this is great. Really, really great. Okay, the Crystal Cave. So we've been on basically three mine style coasters. Swinging, train, and an RMC that's been converted into the wildest. Um, have I been here? I, I don't, I'm reading that, but I'm ask, also asking myself that. They're going both ways, so you, you keep asking questions and making me question my reality. What is... Uh, <laughs> it's not just an Alpine Park, and I, that's what I like about it. There's like a little bit of like mystery here. They said they put quests and stuff and... I don't know, we'll discover also- the sci-fi? What's- what is this? Why is there three pathways? There isn't a wrong path until they write in the comments, you're going up an exit, Johnny, in this life. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> there- there isn't a wrong path in this life. Uh, wowzers. What is that? I didn't- just, what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I love the shift and just like taking it seriously. Beautiful Alpine Park, mine train coasters, good vibes, great music. And then question your reality. Welcome to the end of time. Yo, <laughs> this is wild. What alternate reality? <laughs> I feel like I'm jumping from like one park concept right into another. I feel like I'm recording two videos simultaneously. This is uh, some some next level creativity. Yeah, they couldn't just keep to just keeping it alpine, keeping it fun. Had to add a twist in it. What is, what is this? What? Seven vertical Gs? Oh, Gs. 1.3 miles per hour. The largest drop is 171 meters. What is that? 171 meters to feet. 600 feet? Okay. Um, I'm going to close it down and put it into test mode. I don't even know if the guests can go on this. I guess we go track view? What? are we doing here 700 feet 600 what i don't even know what i said i words what it's a rocket ship okay maybe we got to go seat view because i want the music louder here we go guys hold on to your seat belts you're gonna need it What is happening? My God! What? We're doing it again? Once wasn't enough? <laughs> I don't even know how to contextualize the contents of this park into a thumbnail and title. It's impossible. 
I just hope you guys click this video. Oh my god! It's amazing! What? So gnarly! Wow. It's not over? That six, seven hundred foot drop, whatever that was, that was, uh, something else. So, when you guys tuned in, what's my cat freaking out? What'd you get there? Uh, when you, <laughs> when, when you guys tuned in, I don't know which one's the exit. Entrance, exit. When you tuned into an alpine park, is this what you thought you signed up for? Certainly not the case for me. Uh, part of me wants to, like, kind of ho hopes that I don't know what to think anymore. <laughs> Words. Let's get out of here. <laughs> there is no wrong path in life. Oh, well, this is the path I chose. Was it was it the right one, guys? Let me know down in the comments below. Wait, what? What is this? Did I go up here already? There's guests going up here. They weren't going on that. What? Seriously? We're gonna log flume down here? Hold the phone. A 1.7 kilometer log flume that has 50 mile per hour top speeds and five vertical G forces. What is happening? Oh, the theme park that changed my life. I need, I need a title, guys. <laughs> what's, what's, what's going on? Losing my mind. Uh, great little bonus theme park for the weekend, eh? Ah. Uh, again, could use a little bit more music. But so far, I just... I notice it when it's not there, but the overall experience of this has just been like nothing I've ever seen before, so I can't really complain. And now I'm left in the silence of my own thoughts. The lighting and stuff is really crazy. What made you decide to do like a creepy underground almost pitch black log flume when you have this beautiful alpine terrain up above like nothing we've ever seen before if i'm if i were to guess i'd want to guess that there's two log flumes this can't be the lo the one and only log flume unless there's a river rapids or something right i just felt like there's so much great views and atmospheres above ground that it, it's it's sets a perfect conditions for one of the best if not the best log flume you could possibly ever make um and i remember in the b-roll yeah i got the page up on my other screen there's a log flume outside f for certain so unless this takes us outside at some point which i mean it did say it was over a mile long, or uh, yeah it's over a mile long so maybe, uh, this is just the inner workings of what's to come. So far, though, out of this experience, I'm looking over my recording. I cannot believe we're at 45 minutes because I haven't even begun to start looking at the stuff that I wanted to look at. There's this, like, winged launch coaster that goes to the canyon, and I'm so excited to get to that. We've spent probably just as much time underground as we have above. Uh, well, I guess that is definitely true because we've only been on two coasters that technically go outside, but that RMC was mainly underground. So, yeah. There is so much outside to explore. So much. Wow, look at that. Woohoo! 
trying to think the record setting park spotlight on this channel, I think was Frozen Coasters. Let me see here. Did I spell it wrong? Two hours. And then there was, um... A Halloween one. That was about two hours. Yeah, I don't think we've actually had a park spotlight go over two hours. If there- Ooh, we're going outside! If there's anyone to do it, it's probably going to be this one. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, you guys know by looking at the, the time of the video, but... Current Johnny has no idea where this is going. Wow. And this is what I was talking about. Pure scenery. Pure beauty. This is how you do it, guys. The the vastness, like those towers over there, they're so well constructed and they look miles away. Look at this bridge. The train goes over and under. The intricacies of the bridge system is like the best I've ever seen. And there's the train up top going over. There's gonna be one that passes under at some point. Part of me wishes that the mine train also kind of went through the canyon and across bridges and stuff like that. Like, revealing more and having a little bit more, you know, vistas and views. And they had been... All three of the rides that we've been on were rather... I mean, pretty much every ride we've been on so far has been a rather fast, furious, and claustrophobic experience. But I have a feeling that some of these other things that we're going to get to are going to be the complete opposite in contrast to that. Overall, that should give us quite a good amount of variety. And that's pretty exciting, to say the least. But there's uh, a lot of captivating views to uh, appreciate here. And it's not easy to build these massive alpine forests with rocks in between and paintwork and scenery and actually make it look natural. Like, I look at all this, and I feel like this is a very natural-looking setting. And I gotta say, you did an amazing job at dialing in those perfections, those subtle details. It's just super impressive. Where it's like all this crazy, wacky, underworld, mind-bending reality stuff was completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. But, now that I've experienced it, I... I'm not mad at it. It's part of the experience. Just did not expect it. <laughs> I did not expect it. But that is the fun. Um, these, these park spotlights are... You never know what you're gonna get. Very, very fun. Ah. Uh. Okay, so we got a path network up here at the tibbity top of the mountain, which has taken us 10 minutes to crawl up to so far. It looks like the guests can come all the way up here. Again, look what you did with your, uh... It, the water is gurgling, and it's like a raging river. You did that all manually with emitters and effects. Very, very cool. Again here, you can... You shouldn't be able to see it with Reshade. Reshade is kind of breaking the allure of that. It's showing us... Yeah, a little bit of those emitters. That is the one downside, that transparency with Reshade looks kind of bad. But everything else looks better. Okay, back into the, uh... Vault. Oh my god. Okay. Whoa, that is creepy looking. Wow! The way you lit those rocks is kind of... Whoa, back into the uh, alter, alternate universe. Yeah, I really like the way you lit the caves up. Beautifully well done. Not what I expected when I... Uh, to find a log flume down here. 
I think I just saw a Gaslauer coaster. Or that was the one we went on that dropped 600 meters, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Crazy. Whoa. Well, Max Speed 3, very creative individual. They said they spent like, they started this around the time that COVID started and they've been working on this forever and 500 plus hours to make this, which honestly 500 doesn't seem like a very large amount. Oh no, you got more quests and Easter eggs? You gotta be kidding me. It's not a very large amount for how much content we're seeing here. Okay, it's just an alternate uh, pathway to an alternate reality. Cause I I've seen submissions sent in for parks that are smaller than this that people have claimed, you know, 1500 hours to build. And the vastness of this is just rattling my brain off the sides of my skull. Okay, yeah, out of here. I need fresh air. Oh my God, I might actually need real life fresh share after this oh oh it's so beautiful welcome back to reality <laughs> look at all those other theme parks we haven't been to yet guys <laughs> wow aurora ascension amphitheater restrooms i'm gonna just keep going this way i've i've headed this way we're gonna get a little bit lost if i go down a place and end up somewhere else sure that'll be the experience for the day if i missed anything which is probably likely because of the strange discoveries we've had so far uh, i will find it from the ride list look at this look how like high up the mountains go and how low down we are right to the bottom of the sandbox uh the scale of things is just like nothing i've ever seen and then you've somehow managed to create just alluring compositions on the back of that what is this is that the train? Panderosa Express. This is the winged coaster that I was really looking forward to. And I might have to ride it in like cinematic or orbit because I don't know if the seat view is going to do justice how incredibly high and fast and wild the coaster is. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's, it's really about the landscape that does it for me with this park. Because I've seen end-to-end -end parks that have been somewhat flat, and they just n didn't feel nearly as big as this does. Ooh, that looked like a junior, but the train, because of the train size, but it, it also looked like a corkscrew. Let's see here. It is a junior. Silent Hunter. Look at this lighting. Red, shiny ground, orange lights going off of it. Kind of creepy. Really good at setting the tone on these experiences. Oh, I think this is the winged launch co coaster. I think it is. Oh, strap up, guys. 3.2 kilometers. And for you, uh, 3.2 kilometers to miles. That is two miles in conversion. 54 meters is the biggest drop, 80 miles per hour, 150 seconds in duration, 16 inversions. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even know. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna ride the wing as intended, hang off the side, see how that is. But I have a feeling we're gonna ride this twice. Let's check it out. Do we have music on this thing? I kind of like, I wanna put a song on here. Head in the clouds, let's go. Ride the storm, let's go.
Holy freaking Toledos. We had a little bit of clipping, a little bit of smace, face smashing, but I'm okay with it. That was more than incredible. I wanna try orbit so that I can kind of change the angle at certain times so you can actually get a grip on how wild this thing is soaring. Let's check it out. That is freaking legendary. I've never seen such captivating views and perspectives on a coaster ever. The scale of it, again, I keep talking about the scale. It's just remarkable. Uh, oh, I am just at a loss. Holy moly. Holy freaking moly. Let's keep on keeping on. My eyes are watering. <laughs> My eyes don't understand. Can't compute. No disassemble. Johnny Five is not alive. Holy good googly moogly. Look at this bridge architecture here. That's pretty cool. It's like a drawbridge. That's awesome. Okay, let's let's do something mild or what I would assume to be mild. <laughs> it's a junior, junior little Wendigo, you know, something chill. Ah, oh, this is quite a nice building. Not the queue for my junior. Danger keep out. What's going on over here? Yo, what's this? Ooh. Now I feel like I'm in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Wow! This is remarkable! Alright, I'm here for it. And look at that tower being held up by wires. I don't know if you can see that, but if you have like a 4K screen. Those, uh, can I select it? Eh, I'm probably gonna crash the game. 1,600 individual wires placed. 1,600 manually placed wires. That is, a. Uh, Dedication, if I ever seen. Wowzers. Coming soon? Yo, I, I think you've built enough. Under construction? The crazy caterpillar. I said, let's go on a nice, gentle, something uh, not so extraordinary, something a little bit more on the ordinary side. <clears throat> we get to the queue, and it's called crazy caterpillar. <laughs> okay. I think we're just going to keep things crazy for a while then. 
Here we go. What kind of stats can we expect on a junior? Let's see. Almost a kilometer in length, of course. Biggest drop is 18 meters. Max speeds of 44 miles per hour. Okay, still very long. Almost a kilometer for a junior, which I'm not mad at because I like these. And no music. I'm, I'm, I'm digging the music on these. So let's, uh, let's do Magical Town. This, this area feels quite magical to me. And... My preferred ride of choice is at the back of a very long train. Let's go. Incredible, gorgeous, vibin', loved it. Oh my goodness gracious. That was a great little junior. Although not enough guests uh, got on it considering how many were in the queue. I wonder why it took off so early. I love seeing uh, a packed caterpillar, always the best. Okay, teacups, custom interior on this, love it. Wow, like I said in the top of the video, I let in 5,000 guests. And it goes to show how sprawling this park is because um, there's almost none in sight. <laughs> that is crazy. The uh, I could probably let in like 20,000 and it would still not feel very crampy. Great wit midway games over here. All custom. Train crossing? Yo! Yo! That guy doesn't care. Your life is forfeit. Yeet! The small details. I appreciate all of this. I- I want to go over there. I want to- but I want to make sure I didn't forget anything on this side of the- of the- whatever we're at now. <laughs> Wowzers. The the showboat? I think this creator's showboating a little bit. But um <laughs> The Pandarosa Express, the four kilometer train ride. Wanted to see so the showboat is just a party barge, right? Can we go on and gamble? Cool. Very, very cool. I'm zooming around. Whoa, what is happening to this bridge? Is that arch architecturally stable? I don't know, but I like it. Okay. My understanding is this all brings us back to stuff we've seen before. What's up top? Okay, so this goes all the way up here. Is it just a sitting area? I can watch the RMC go by. That's pretty awesome. I kind of want to give that ride and get another go, but in like orbit view. Yeah, I want to I want to climb the mountain. Part of me feels like there's going to be another alternate reality up there. Of sorts. Looks like a giant lodge for the guests to stay at, which is pretty cool. And look at that! There's another park back there. There's a park over there. There's probably another theme park over there that we haven't been to. <laughs> this is crazy. There's a look at the RMC again. The, the, the downside of these coasters being so long, you don't get to like really watch them go by because they're in the middle of their seven minute duration. <laughs> okay. Alpine 
mountain rail rain what Ra it is an alternate reality mountain railroad clever I'm already dyslexic enough and that really hurt my brain I think I got a blood clot ah uh, help me so this is uh another stop to the never-ending train. I'm actually pretty excited to ride this train. A 10-minute train ride that has probably s the best views I've ever seen uh, on the vast never-endingness of this experience. It'll be quite something else. I've definitely come to appreciate a really good scenic train ride over the years. And uh, this seems to be the kingpin of them all. The mother load. Yo, are those maggots? Grilled larva. I thought they were salty prawns at first, and then I'm like, wait. Oh, <laughs> look how far that building is over there. <laughs> Take another 15, 20 minutes to get to that side of the park. There's a kraken in the pond. Oh, and it's shooting out larvae that they're serving to the people. That's what I was saying, like... Uh, first appearance is, it's an ordinary, quite a happy, vibin', beautiful, stunning alpine park, but this crater's got a dark soul. <laughs> and I mean that in the most complimentary of ways. They, uh, really dark cr creativity and taking us to parallel universes and feeding us larva. This was, uh worth the climb and we will uh cockroach in that's what i'm see you see what i'm saying uh roach out scatter oh my god all right we're gonna fly through the vastness of everything back to where i was originally and uh somewhere around here my goodness the, there we go railroad crossing Rome. we're going over to this theme park this one do not climb cables yeah, that'd be terrifying. I watched some of those, uh, professional climbers who climb cranes and stuff. Sometimes when I want to freak myself out. I have, uh, pretty bad vertigo, so... It's a good scare. That's what that reminded me of. Okay. Whew. Oh, wow. That tower is a drop tower. Of course it is. It's very creative. Very, very creative. The fire tower. I love it. Wait. Another RMC! Playing Planet Bluegrass! <laughs> Let's go! Let's freaking go! Let's see how crazy this one is compared to the last one. Yellowstone! We're looking at 1.1 kilometers and like 60 miles per hour, 30... Seven meters is the biggest drop. Five airtime counts, zero inversions. Interesting. Coulda, all right, all right. Let's um, let's do the fun view. And we shouldn't have a, yeah. Should have a clear view of everything. Let's go.
back just in time. We're gonna be dead honest. I uh, <clears throat> I had to go to the bathroom really bad, and I knew since we're gonna be here for another three hours, I uh, I went to the bathroom. We got a drink, so I definitely want to ride this again in track view. And I caught a glimpse of it as I was walking by, and it looked incredible. So while I can watch it in post, I'm sure some of you might want to see and appreciate the track view anyways. So we might as well go again. Definitely, definitely incredible. Uh, making a, an RMC a little bit more tame compared to your last one. No inversions or anything like that, but I love it. I, I can definitely tell you um, wanted to do something a little bit more calm compared to your last one. No harm in doing two in your theme park, considering how extreme and intense your first one was. And as I mentioned, almost resembling that of a mine train coaster on steroids. It was just over the top. A uh, beautiful cue for this fire tower. I'm really liking the vibe of this. It looks like it's going up now. Let's get on this before we miss out. And what row should I be in? What's the best view? Ooh, look at all those coasters we haven't been on. And those ones. There's a theme park over there. There's a theme park over there. I, um, I'm actually kind of befuddled. <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen a theme park this big. Have we? I still can't get my head around the vastness of all of this. Like, everywhere I turn, I'm like, there's definitely another 30 minutes of content over there. <laughs> what is this drop tower doing? It's just kind of going up and down and up and down. Is it... Is it ever going to launch us? Here we go. Nope, it's done. Okay, it's just had a spasm. I will accept that for what it is. Let's go over to this new theme park over here. <laughs> what do we got going on over there? Okay, that's uh pretty vibrant looking. More alternate reality shops. Uh, no expense has been spared on details. Every uh, one of these big areas is fully interior, fully decorated, uh, and uh, I'm having a hard time figuring out why my computer is not self-imploding. <laughs> How was my frame rate so good? What is happening here? Okay, we have a four-seated inverted coaster with this really cool cyan blue theme going. It's the last airbender, guys. Everywhere we look, we see that train. Doesn't it feel like, I don't know, we're like, we're, I feel like we're playing an open world game. We're in like a freaking sandbox. Everywhere I go, there's trains and stations and transportation. And it's like, what the heck? What the heck? Results, 1.2 kilometers in length, 60 miles per hour. Biggest drop is 34 meters, six inversions total, and a whopping five vertical G-forces. There's a little taste of it there. Going seat view, middle seats, off we go.
<laughs> a rolling ball. Wow, what a nice touch. I thought it was a basic shape. You fooled me. Oh, that is kind of fun. I didn't realize you could recolor those rolling balls. I would like to see a few more of those introduced. Only one person of the 5,000 made it over to this side of the park. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> great. Absolutely great inverted coaster layout. Great experience, unique theming. So much variety in this park. I'm just astonished, really. That rolling ball was a great little touch. It's like the coaster kicked it out of the way as it was going by. Love it. This one skidded off the track and went through the fence. <laughs> Subtle touches. What a creative creator here today. Love to see it. Where are we at now? We're just uh, cruising through the forest. Oh. Woohoo! You can hear them screaming. That coaster has got to be the showstopper, isn't it? I think that's going to be my favorite one of the whole video. That was just remarkable. Now we just got to enjoy the scenery and relax a little bit. What's this over here? A viewpoint for a beautiful waterfall, the train passing. So scenic. Gorgeous. Boom. Cannons being fired. Boom. How do I get out of here? All right. There was a... Where'd that red coaster go? <laughs> I lost a coaster. Uh, zoomy zooms. There's a parking lot back here? Yo, what the heck? Look at all the attention to detail going on back here. Administration. Woo! Big old radio tower. I feel like you should have put an observatory going up that. That would have been a sick idea. I like all this uh, realism back here. I am I am just flying all I apologize, guys. I, I usually don't do this. I'm pretty bad today. I've flown around a few times, but I want to get to the Red Baron. I'll slow down from here until I won't. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're coming up on an hour and a half now. If I don't zoom around a little bit, yeah, this is a, uh, it's gonna be quite the doozy. It's a spinning coaster. Very cool. Now, when we first came into the park, when you, if you take a right and you go over the river, there's like a whole theme park back there. That is the size of some of the other parks I've featured in the last few weeks. <laughs> so, um, even though we've made it all the way to the back end of the park, we haven't even explored the front half fully. 600 meters in length, 53 miles per hour. 30 meters is the biggest drop. It's a standard spinny spin. We're going to probably have to enjoy it in the spin view. So let's get to it. Oh my god, the spins on that were vicious. I want to, I didn't even get to appreciate the track on it. There's a song that I favored it. I don't remember favoriting all these songs. Or maybe it's based off what the creator favorited. I found it. The Crazy Scientist. Let's, uh, let's try this thing out in, uh, Pop Up. <laughs> Wait, are we gonna still spin like this? Oh no, that's not what I want. I don't know how to do this. I guess this will work. The spins were a little out of control but the layout's pretty sick. 
Wowzers. Okay, now I'm gonna do it. Apologize again. I want to see how much ground we've covered. So we've been on all this stuff. There's this massive sprawling area over here. Been on all this. We've been around here. So that theme park's complete. What is this? I don't think we've been on that. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. What is, what is all this? Okay, we went back here a little bit. That's how we got to the wing coaster. But there's something else here, I think. No, that's the wing. But there's something above it. It's the train. There's a lake. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Get yourself together, man. We're gonna jump back over to here. Old Town. Find our way to that Intamin Blitz launch style coaster called the Copperhead. This one looks pretty uh, elaborate as well. And, um, and then we're gonna head back to the park entrance and go to this whole other area of the park that we haven't even seen yet. Copperhead, what do we got going on here? 1.2 kilometers in length, 71 miles per hour, 36 meters is the biggest drop, six inversions, really good stuff. Let's do Ride the Storm. say did it again just wow after wow factor everywhere we go it's a good old time isn't it good googly moogly look at this place like the uh, matte black on that lockers chief beef burgers it's uh professor worst the stable this is where we came in right yeah, that's the entrance right there. And I took a left, or I went, I think I went straight, right to the island. So everything over here. Yeah, I think I crossed through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything on this side, welcome to the wild, wild west. This is all new. Oh my goodness. And that uh, woody looks like it's going pretty high up. There's fire and flames and Something crazy going on over there. Huh. What do we got going on here? Beautiful western builds, by the way. I like all the trim work on there. These are very ornate. This wooden coaster layout looks sick. I'm assuming this is the queue for this, and I want to ride it. Let me go, let me go! On a fly! Woo! Look how close that gets to the woody there. Crushing by some trees. Oh my god. Underneath what looks to be a corkscrew of some sort. Wow. Wow. Very nice. Get your Missy Good Donuts over here. Do a little bit of shopping. Like all the stuff you got, props and details everywhere. There is uh, not a, an inch of this park that hasn't been handcrafted. The attention to detail is just 
above and beyond. Okay, the Wrangler. Is this the cue for the Wrangler? I'm hoping, I'm assuming. Let's go. Now, it appears to be the track of a traditional corkscrew, but is it going to be traditional? Probably not, based off of things we've seen so far. It is the Looping Deegan, which is a standard corkscrew coaster. One kilometer in length, five inversions, a little bit of air time, 64 miles per hour. 41 meters is the biggest drop. We are forgetting music on our coasters, and I've been enjoying it. Let's see if we can find something a little bit more vintage or World's Ferry. Let's see here. I don't know what this is. Classic Big and Barn. It is a Western area. Let's try it out. <laughs> Woohoo! Wow, freaking wee. There's a chairlift back there. Yo. Okay. Still a little bit of a ways to go, you guys. looks incredible oh my goodness uh, i would have to say this this coaster is a little bit more on the traditional side but still amped up quite a bit like i said the, this creator has spared no expense at just making all of the rides incredibly extreme and awesome this has been an experience to remember absolutely this could probably be my park of the year so far i think I've seen a couple others that I've really, really liked, but, um, I think this one's taking the place. Absolutely. Wow. These buildings look amazing. Wait, how do we get to the Woody? It's got to be down here. That's the lift. Head towards the lift. I've uh, misbehaved with my zooms today. I'm sorry. I'm too excited. Okay, there we go. That is one tall lift. And we got the Renegade. Oh, 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 oh. We're jumping queue. Before we hit the two hour mark on this video. <laughs> no music. We got to pick something a little bit more Western. What's in the Western section? Spaghetti roller coaster. Let's go. Uh, 1.2 kilometers in length, 70 miles per hour, 50 meters is the biggest drop, but the lift looks like it's going a lot higher than that. Five air times, six seconds of air time. Should be getting tons ah! of air time. Okay. Riding this my favorite way at the back. We got no one in front of us. Off we go.
go. Yeehaw! <laughs> That's be hanging on. Woo! Oh, wow. I'm gonna need a nap after this park. My goodness gracious. This is a one crazy experience after another. Just my goodness. Wowzers. Okay, I think we've knocked off another area of the park. There's that mountain over there, which we haven't been to, which I believe leads to the top, which goes around the massive lake. And then I think we've explored all of it, but we also have a 10 minute train ride that we must check out as well. So uh, we might be clocking in at around two hours. Two hours and uh, no park has really exceeded the two hour mark. This might be close. We're 15 minutes away from that, but I edit these videos, so maybe 20, 25 minutes. We'll have to see, but what is Pine Island? Oh, yeah, yeah, this area looked incredible. All the boats, boat launches. This is uh, quite the vibe here. So this is just uh, a massive little island. Massive little. Words today are hard. Little in content, massive in size. That's what I meant. All for uh, the guests to come have an eat and have a s sit. But no rides here. But that's okay. We need a little bit of a break from those. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying that. But my goodness. It's just been one crazy experience after another. Back to another wild and zany bridge that wraps us up and over to what appears to be an area that we haven't seen yet. And I do see some more coaster tracks that don't look familiar to me. So I think we're uh, about to experience... What's going on with your cables? Something went wrong with your uh, duplication rotation. Oh, look at this. Panda Rose Amphitheater. Just one person sitting there playing the piano and nobody watching. I love it. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> Bike rentals? God, this is actually a perfect spot for it too because it all goes up that trail. So it's like a mountain biking uh, trail. This uh, area of the park's kind of closed down. A little bit of a sci-fi theme going on over here. I didn't even look at any of the park at night. I think they said something in their comments about it uh, being possible to ride them at night. Generally, I like to ride most of the coasters at day and night, but I figured uh, being such a nature focus park with most of the focus on the actual scenery we're not going to see any lights in the forest but something I could definitely at least look at maybe if a couple coasters pop out to us we can check them out at night um, but if we were to ride every single coaster here at both day and night this would for sure end up being a four hour episode <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you're, uh, if you're still with me and you're still enjoying the experience, you guys are champions. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I have. Definitely a lot of hype behind this one. It's just like an onion. It keeps revealing its layers and it's, uh, making me cry. <laughs> In a good way. Aurora. Aurora. Okay. I would suspect Aurora would be the type of coaster you'd want to ride at night. So we could see some sort of Aurora Borealis lighting effect. So maybe we'll check this one out at night at the very least. 2.2 kilometers in length, 100 miles per hour. The biggest drop being 82 meters? Yo, yo, just when you thought things were like slowing down a little bit, we're back up, dialing it in. Uh, we're definitely gonna be riding this one in track view. Let's have at her. 
Um, no music on this one again. Let's go ahead in the clouds because we're literally going to be putting our head in the clouds on this one from the uh, 100 meter drop description. Let's go. something in the sky there. Oh no, that's a lens flare. <laughs> yeah, I'm so curious to see this one at night though. I'll take a look at before I ride it. Ooh. Chairlifts, gondola. out of uh, gimmicky Johnny words to express myself. There's been so many wows, good googly mooglies, holy Toledos, and more. Yeah, not a lot of nighttime lighting. However, the park looks nicely lit. Oh my goodness. Okay, tune in for part two when we explore the whole park and ride all of the rides at nighttime. But the coaster actually isn't lit up at nighttime, so I think I'm going to pass on that. And we went down there. We're going over here next into another cave. And I wouldn't be surprised if we stumble across another dark ride of some sort. The atmosphere is just next level. Okay, the crystal cave. That is something we did go explore. So I did come through here, just not what was directly behind us. I must have come at it from a different angle or something. I think we've almost done it. Let's go back today. Whoops, camera effects. That's not what we want. Let's take a, a fly around. There was this whole back, oh. Okay, that's the log flume. So, oh, the chairlift, of course. The gondola. So you get up to the ascension, walk up through here. I feel like we should check out the gondola. I wanna say it's probably got a pretty good view. The only thing I struggle with with these things is figuring out like what group to ride, right? I think this one's kind of going up. Yeah, this isn't very good. It's kind of tucked behind the mountains, so I don't really get to see much of the park. But if we were to have ridden it, it would have, uh, where's it going? Where am I? What am I doing? Where does it go? Oh, through here. It would have brought us all the way up here. You painstakingly placed all those cables. That is crazy. Bing. Where do we get off? Here. I'm just curious. If there's anything for us to see up here. Oh, that's the queue. Whoopsie doodles. Um, this is quite nice. Cherry blossom trees. <laughs> Try not to be a dick. <laughs> huh. Let's see the view. <laughs> Is this a theme park or what? Uh, screenshot, please. Oh my god. 
Look how much there is. Yeah, I think the one word to summarize everything here is vastness. The scale. It's like nothing I've ever seen. Part of me, like, anticipates there to be a ride up here. Reflection. Wait, what? Time to self-reflect. You just come in here and, uh, get a little misty shower. While you do some self-reflection by the waterfalls. I dig it. Boom. Bam, bam. It feels like the atmosphere at night is supposed to be really good in here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we could take a look at the uh, park from up here at night. Let's do that. Go stand on the edge of the rocks. What is that? Whoa, what had happened? Well, I guess we're standing on the top of the building now. I was trying to zoom in. Yeah, that's not working for me. Okay, scrap that. Let's see where the path leads us. Did I come up here already? There was a train stop or something, right? Possibly. Oh, wow, you did a hammer swing at the top of the freaking mountain. Woo. Woo. Oh, there's more. Going over the log flume. Oh, yeah, this is that pathway we were looking at while I was on the log flume that I commented on. That was like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> wow, my throat is pretty much done now. <laughs> I've run out of commentary for the day. Mm-hmm. Hey, some people made it up here. Got some survivors. Another watchtower over there. A dragon? Is this one of the quests that we're supposed to go on? He really likes s'mores. And he takes big poops. They call him Tim. <laughs> I like all the little Easter eggs and hidden surprises that are... There's just more than just an alpine adventure. It's truly an experience like nothing we've ever seen. Hope to see more from this creator in the future. <clears throat> Generally what happened... Oh, and they sell s'mores over here. We, do, we can get some s'mores and bring them over to the dragon. Generally, um, if you guys give this video likes, share it on social media, leave a comment, anything to help the engagement so this creator uh, gets the recognition that they deserve, gets the amount of views that they deserve. The more people that see this creation, recommend this creation, and share it, the more views the creator gets. As a result, they generally tend to get super motivated by all the positivity, all the wonderful comments, all, all, all of my elation. And from there, uh, it puts a fire under their butts to kind of, you know, get that reaction again get that energy and then you get to a sequel out of creators like this and that's what i'm hoping for so if we can get more views on this more engagement then uh that will lead to us having another experience like this in the future hopefully this time it doesn't take them three years to make but if it did take you three years to make the least i can do is spend an hour or two of my time here trying to soak it all up and uh really make the most of it my recording is officially hitting the two hour mark which is uh incredible i don't think a video has actually gone over the two hour mark on this channel but there is editing so maybe after riding the train ride giving my final thoughts we will uh, have done it. Set a world record right here today. I also have to check the ride list because for all we know, we have missed a couple attractions. It's definitely possible with how many hidden Easter eggs and areas there have been. This is the upper lake that I looked at from a bird's eye view. Will it start? Will what start? What's starting? Beautiful uh, walkway. Is the, Are you talking about the airplane starting? The train comes all the way around here. Fishing dock and swimming. Send it? Full send, baby. <laughs> Don't try it more than twice. Third time it.
You okay? The bomb on the side has me a little- Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, great little, uh, Easter eggs. There goes the train. The four-mile train. I am enjoying the- just the peaceful serenity of the upper back pathways. It's really quite nice. And you get a sense of scale of how big these coasters have been and how epic. What? But I think we've done it. I think we've actually traversed 90% of the footpath area. I can't really think of an area we haven't been. Back here. Little geysers. It's a hot spring. Man, you really have it done it all. Really, really have. This is something else, you guys. I cannot believe the vastness of all of this. And the, uh, the, the terrain. The scale, right? This is just pure insanity. I don't even know what or how I'm supposed to get a thumbnail for this video. <laughs> Whichever one I go with, I hope it works in drawing people in. Let's go to the ride list. Let's do it. And then if uh, I don't find anything, we'll go on the train. All right, ladies and gentlemen, based off of the ride list, we have done it. <clears throat> we have hit everything there is to uh, explore in this park, and I am quite satisfied with that experience. My favorite coaster is going to be uh, the winged launch coaster, the one that went through all the canyons. That was just insane. Let's, uh, let's give this train ride a go. Enjoy the beauty. One final tour around the whole park, just to sum it all up, to really get one last look at everything from a, a perspective, an angle that we haven't seen yet. This is where the 5,000 guests are. This is probably the most popular attraction in the entire park. It seems like it's gonna be pretty great. Uh, once again, if we wanna look at the ride stats on this, 3.7 kilometers in length, 500 seconds in duration, just bananas. So I'm gonna speed it up when we get to these stops, and we're gonna also go track view for this. I might might have to uh, get the volume down just a little bit because uh, it's going to be like chuck, 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 chuck. And I will try to pop out the camera once in a while when we get to some some cool bridges because it's such a, well, I was going to say two times speed might be the way to go, but it's probably too fast to actually appreciate those details. Maybe when we're going through tunnels, I could speed it up when there's not a whole lot to look at. But look at that. It interacts and reminds us of all the things that we experienced throughout today's adventure. A look back over everything that we've gone through, where we started, but from a different perspective. I quite like that. This has been an experience like no other. I've uh, come to really enjoy this Alpine stuff. We saw one last week that just blew me away. And this is like that, but on a much more extreme scale. As mentioned, the creator spared no expense to just take everything over the top. Stuff you would never see in real life, only able to be done in a game like Planet Coaster. And that's what makes this game so special. Not only are you able to express yourself creatively, do amazing stuff with this game engine, but you're able to let your imagination run wild. And this creator originally started with that Mine Rush coaster, which was that just wild and crazy RMC, which honestly, that on itself, all, all as a, as a part, uh, coaster spotlight, would have been a great experience right then and there. But you just kept on pushing the envelope, going further, going further, and running with uh, Alpine. Not only is it very nature-esque and Alpine feeling, it has a lot of realism too. Things like the train, the train crossing here, uh, all the backstage stuff, the staff facilities, everything is so realistic. But then you've gone to the Twilight Zone. All that stuff we saw underground, the alternate realities, the alternate u re universes, all sorts of crazy stuff that you've dreamt up in your imagination and, you know, got to let that out here without really tampering or hindering what you did so well. Sometimes when people go a little bit over the top, a little bit zany, it kind of detracts from the experience, you know? It kind of pulls you out of the suspension of disbelief or whatever. And uh, for me, it's just like a 
a full, complete, wonderful Alpine experience with some hidden dark secrets down below. All of that zaniness, you found a way to separate it all to keep the two experiences separate, but also whole. And it made for an interesting contrast where too much scenery, too much nature, too many walking down paths and forests and trails could have probably been boring at times, but we would just pop out of like this life altering experience, questioning our reality being stuck in the darkness of the depths below coming up back to this nature was quite a refreshing change and a, a break from it all and then same could be said about look at this coaster here so extreme so next level several minutes in length going to extreme heights and dangerous speeds to take a break from that and enjoy the nature again is quite a contrast. And I, I really like how you just pushed everything. Set the bar high and pushed it even higher. Aim for the stars and hit the next galaxy. <laughs> it's just, and then you just have all this wildness. Super creative. It's pretty remarkable. I could definitely see how this took you uh, three years and 500 hours to make, but again, uh-oh. 500 hours is on the shorter end of uh, email submissions that I've read off in the past. People saying, oh, I spent 1,500 hours on this park, or yada, yada, yada. The amount of content and amazing experiences here matches that of ones that took thousands of hours to make. It just seems to me that you worked very efficiently, right? You've delivered an experience that was just as awe-inspiring as others that took three times as long to make. Uh, that seems really impressive to me. Overall, like, there in any feedback I could have given, could have been a more ambience, a little bit more music in some areas. It's a very sprawling park that's mostly focused on nature, so I don't expect speakers to be everywhere where I go. But definitely some of the, the stations, the coaster stations. Not Having music on a coaster is a preference. It's a choice. It's not a feedback or anything like that. But uh, having it on the stations and kind of leading into the coasters is actually quite nice. Um, and some of those dark rides could have used a little bit of ambience. Other than that, it would be my only little bit of feedback there. I have just realized there are two trains because we did not go up here. We did not go up here. So let's wait for the next train. That is actually kind of cool. Wait, so we went around that whole four kilometers. That went a lot faster than I anticipated. Oh my God. This one's 10 kilometers with a thousand seconds in duration. I didn't even know the math on that. I need a calculator. A thousand seconds divided by 60 is 16 minutes? No way. No freaking way. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I thought a four kilometer coat, uh, train ride was groundbreaking and setting new records and in the very same park that broke the record for the longest train ride exists another that is nearly two and a half times the size of the record breaking one <laughs> that is wild i've ran out of stuff to talk about uh oh i gotta see this from a a third person view. Whoa, 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 whoa! Look at these bridges. How many stops is on this? I like that. Multi uh, train network system. One for the higher up, one for the lower down. Pretty cool. Very, very cool. 
Yeah, I've pretty much ran out of stuff to talk about. I've ran out of good googly mooglies and holy Toledos. I think I've exhausted my uh, word count for the month in this park alone. <laughs> I don't know how to articulate myself anymore without repeating myself. And honestly, I don't even think I really needed to say anything at all, as this park really did speak for itself. Look at that. I want to see more parks, like, with terrain. These mountains are literally, like, hundreds of meters tall. And it makes for, like, a really cool experience. And we have seen parks this big in the past. But the verticality adds content, right? Because not only can you go up the mountain, you can go in the mountain, you can go under the mountain, you can go around the mountain, you can build sideways on it, have bridges between them, waterfalls and trails, and it just adds more volume. And then you're filling that volume in, and it just creates for something truly special. So... I think I'd, I'd definitely have to s say that this is the biggest theme park ever featured on the channel. While we've seen others that had 15, 16 coasters or what have you, this one has the grand scale, the most terrain, and it stretches out. But there was also no shortage in coasters and rides. We must have gone on like a dozen coasters and rides overall. I don't know exactly know the count, but I usually put timestamps down in the description below. Uh, or if you hover over the video, there should be timestamps and you can count out how many rides we've been on. But it's been a lot. And it's really like the quality of the experiences. Like that one winged launch coaster alone. <clears throat> that, that was enough for me. Like... It, Give me that coaster, let me ride that thing once or twice, and I'm happy for the day. Uh, also the RMC, I think, yeah, so the wing launch coaster going through the canyon was my favorite. The RMC, the one that we basically kicked the episode off with, is my second favorite because you basically turned a, a seal top into a mine train and spiraled it through a mountain, and I've never seen that. It's a lot of things in this park that set records, right? Longest train, longest wing, winged coaster, uh, most elaborate, unique RMC hybrid mine train. Uh, some weird, the, the, probably the weirdest park with all the weird stuff underground. <laughs> and then definitely the largest scaling Alpine coaster to date. So, Max Speed, you are officially a legend. <laughs> You're, he's actually, uh... Oh, he's an advanced builder in Discord. People will get so mad if I make him a legend. Because if you go to his workshop, he's got this. Um... He made a fighter jet, a wrecking ball crane, a tower, which is in this park, and a barn. <laughs> but this here alone is a legendary creation, 100%. Pad your workshop with some more blueprints and stuff, and then the mod squad cannot deny you the, the rank of legend. But I'm going to personally open up Discord. Let's see here. And go to, uh... Where is it? Server settings. Members. Max speed. There you are. And I'm gonna bump you up to an expert. Right here, doing it live. You're now an expert boulder. Done, done, done. A legend in my eyes based off this creation. 
but an official expert. Wow, look at this view. Wait a second. We just pulled into here. I'm so confused. Is there not two train rides? Oh, I mistake this train station for this one. Okay, so I must have rode part of it and then gotten off here or something. Yeah, look, there's there's one here. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. It's so intricate. No, because I said it had four. Yeah, there are two. There's 100% two, but there are two stations very similar in both layout and uh, location. So we're not even done yet. I didn't want to screw that up. But I got confused there for a second. I was like, wait, we're back to where I got on the first train. But yeah, 10 kilometers in in track. Manually placing them down like 10 meters at a time. Chunk, clunk, 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 place, place, place. Uh, basically, you had to place a thousand track pieces. Or so. Maybe more, depending on the length of the segments that you used. And then you had to run that and do the train work for every single bit of it and uh, run it through all of the places and build the stations and I mean I am literally blown away by the the train alone <laughs> it's incredible oh we got another uh, massive bridge to check out I love these This was my favorite area of the whole park. This uh, Cosmo Canyon, Chaos Canyon, that wing launch coaster spinning, hitting the water, splash, 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 splash. It was just so awesome. Yeah. Wash out ahead. We're gonna wash? Is that a literal statement? Oh. Waterfalls. So glad I have the new computer for this creation. There's no way my old computer would have ran this thing. No way. I definitely love this uh, upper lake area as well. This is for all you uh, train lovers out there. I mean, there's entire games dedicated to trains. This is uh, the, the kingpin of them all. This part gets all of the awards. 100%. It's hard to pick a favorite thing, but I'm still going for the wing coaster. The train ride is just insane. And the RMC was amazing. But the grand scope, the overall package, it's definitely getting my park of the year award for so far. And I feel bad because I already... I had one the other week that I was like, yeah, this is this is just my absolute favorite. Disney Evolved, I think I called it. Uh, Luna Lake. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think it was Mr. Vanderpants that did that one. But I think, uh, I think this one's got you topped, Mr. Vanderpants. It's time to put on your big boy pants and try to outdo it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Love every one of these parks, obviously, you guys. Uh, for for their own reasons. Oh wow, a tour through the crystal cave. Yeah. I love them all for different reasons. And that's why this never gets old. That's why you guys still tune in. It's it's quite amazing to see what people are coming up with even seven years into Planet Coaster. And I've said this before, it just gets better every year. We never seen anything like this up until now. It took seven years of this game being out for not only the creator to stumble out across the game, but to spend the last three years building it. Got to think about it. If it took them three years to make, Planet Coaster was only four years old at that point. Right? It's uh, pretty wild. I don't know how you guys do it. But... Project Planko is a good example of that. I use the, the power of the community. Hundreds of builders participated by building blueprints and plots for Project Planko. And we're still, we're coming up on a year to finish the project. And that's with me, like, utilizing hundreds of people. The manpower of the community. And uh, it still took a year. And these people, like this creator here today, did this all on their own over three years. I think that is a lot more impressive than me uh 
building a park with the help of hundreds of people in a year. Because I, I would have uh, creatively hit so many roadblocks along the way if it weren't for the help of Batch and many of the other creators that helped out. So, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful work. I hope you guys feel inspired by this video from this creation. It's It's been something else. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like, leave a comment. It definitely helps and engagement. And also just leave a comment for the creator themselves. Uh, I hope Max Speed gets to read some of your wonderful comments, gets inspired and comes back to us. And maybe three years from now, we'll get another park to this epic scale, to this epic proportions. I'd almost like to see them take a stab at doing Alpine Winter, bobsleds and all that. Like they've already dialed in this look and feel. What would it be like with all these crazy bridges and canyons and stuff uh, done to like a winter style? There's so much you can explore with that concept alone that's probably what my biggest would uh critique or not desire would be to see out of them next but just keep this in mind max if you're watching uh you don't have to go this big small parks are great you don't have to spend three years baking them but you said uh you got that creative you know what do you call it snowball effect and you just couldn't stop so um thank god for that because we got to experience it here today and what i thought was going to be a 30 minute park spotlight of something small because the screenshot i thought i was signing up for was just this little mountain and that little mountain turned into all of this stuff end-to-end -end sandbox capped out what the game is potential all but this tiny little crevice back here inch every inch of this was covered even down with the underworld down below with all that other crazy stuff that we saw down there i don't even know where it is anymore but there it is ladies and gentlemen my recording says two hours and 25 minutes so yet again a, another world record in the longest park spotlight on this channel uh max has done it all i am talked out i am signing out and uh i hope everybody here has a wonderful day and enjoyed this wonderful creation have a fantastic weekend everybody and i will see you in the next video bye now